taking over All right, let's double check this. Yep, looks like we're live. Okay, I don't think I have anybody in here at the moment. Um, yeah, so I just decided to do this on a whim, so maybe people show up, maybe they won't, but um, I'm gonna go over making a map. So if you uh, check, if you're interested, I posted, I'm gonna make a, a battle map that's gonna be um, some haunted mines or caves. I'm not really gonna go too, too in depth with like the whole mine theme. I've done that before, it takes a while. Um, this is something for tonight. So just to show you guys, it's 11.24 my time, um, how long it's gonna take me to make a map for my night's game. I'm thinking under an hour, maybe an hour, maybe a little bit more. Um, I already have all my assets created and, and ready to go, except for the winter part. I'm gonna do that in this stream. I'm gonna take stuff that's not wintry and make it wintry. Um, and then I'm also going to build like kind of a two-part map. So there's going to be an outside, which is going to be a landscape with some cliffs and um, some boulders and trees and logs and stuff like that. And then there's going to be an inside area where I can populate my dungeon. Um, and uh, as part of that, now that I'm thinking about it, um, I might show you guys how to uh, a, a fun little technique that I use for uh, for making dungeons and, and caves and stuff like that I might just share that with you um, if you're interested and you're watching this uh, all the assets that I'm using oh hey what's up man My, my one follower is here. <laughs> Nut job EP. Um, but uh, I'm going to show you guys. Uh, if you go to my Patreon, I went ahead and just shared this one public. So every single one of the assets that I'm using in, to make this map is available on my Patreon, which is Valor Maps. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to grab any of those, um, you can do that. So, um, yeah. So just they're out there. I don't know how long if I'll leave them out there forever. I may not because I think some of the, the logs and stuff I'm using are going to be in one of the, the sets that I plan on selling here in a few months. So I might take those down at some point. So if you want any of those assets, go to my Patreon. Even if you're not subscribed, grab it. You know, it's there. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so I made my stream folder here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab all of the assets I plan on using, except for I mentioned that I might grab another. Oh wait, actually, you know what? I think that one's not meant to be full sized. Yeah, it's not. So that, that grass texture that you saw is uh, making some seamless textures. Also that I'm hoping to uh, put out in a pack in a few months and that's, that's part of that. So I need to actually replicate that real quick. But since I designed it to be a seamless texture, hopefully it will be seamless. So that's control. T when you see me modify these things. Um, that's how I'm doing that. So if your things aren't seamless and you're putting them together like this and you see um, there's a couple of different ways to see if your stuff is uh, fitting together right or not. Um, one easy way is if you go like do an inner glow. Oh look at that. Yeah, there might be another way. That's the way I usually figure it out. Um, see, this works on roll 20, but I'll show you guys how to see. If we want to do that, we'll go over here to Band-Aid. There it is, Spot Healing Brush. Get this guy out. And it's actually, if I keep this guide layout on, come on, there we 
go. So whenever you have that guide layout, your, your cursor wants to stick to it. So for stuff like this, it'll make it easier. Actually, making this a little bigger might help. Someday I am going to invest in a drawing pad. laid plans of mice and men. I didn't intend to show this to y'all, but there are all these little things that just happen every once in a while, and it's important to know how to deal with them. Let's see, clear layers tiles. Hopefully this won't be a huge deal because this grass is this grass is going to get some use, but it's not. It's not like this whole thing is going to be grass. If I were doing this and it was going to be a big giant grassy field and grass was going to be a major element of the map, I'd be a little bit more careful about how I, uh, I treated it. But in this case, that looks. There's definitely such a thing as good enough. Um, it's a raster. Rasterize all those. Okay, so those are my base textures. Um, now we're going to get in. So, kind of the major part of this map is are going to be my cliffs. Um, these are also available. I might show you guys how to make these sometime. Um, but that's probably going to be kind of its own. 30, 40 minute thing. Um, cliffs is something I've started doing lately in the past. I don't know, it's definitely newer to my style if you look at some of my older work that I have available. For those of you um, unfamiliar, I've posted all kinds of free maps all over the interwebs, just like, just everywhere. Um, this is something I enjoy doing. And, yep, that's pretty much it. Um, all right, so these are going to be a major kind of element of this map. What I want, what I want to happen is I want this to be my in my mind, for what it's worth. Um, in my mind, this is like a, a, a rock, so it's a rock formation that's coming out of a cliff. And then I'm going to have an entrance here at the bottom. And then inside, I'm going to have some chambers. So those of you who are not familiar with my maps, my maps are always 50 by 50, uh, at least the ones that I post publicly. My commercial stuff, I'm going to have some variations, like module, uh, modular and uh, seamless maps. But so to show you kind of a scale for this, so any one of these squares is a token, you know, like a person. Uh, and roll 20. So that's kind of the scale of what we're looking at. Um, and in game, if you guys want to know how to like how I run these and how people I know who run these run them, whenever I have a thing like this, we're kind of doing this wishy-washy 2D, not 2D thing. So whenever I have cliffs like this, I always say that the cliffs are as tall as they are in this. So if this is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, if this is 30 up, then that's going to be a 30-foot cliff. Um, all right, so now that we're done kind of explaining that and walking through it, let's see how we want to do this. Do we want this all the way on the side? Because sometimes this stuff's more fun if we kind of play around with it a little bit, right? And I can just say over here on this side of the map, this is nothing but cliffs. Um, and put this over here. Okay. And this is really just to give myself some elevation. Uh, I also want a place for hobgoblins to have some ballista on the side of this, or uh, up on this cliff. Uh, I want, I want, yeah, I definitely want a place. And a ballista is going to be a 10 by 10, so, it's, or I'm sorry, yeah, well, 10 by 10, so it's going to be two cubes by two cubes. So yeah, so this will leave me some place to have some ballistas there. Uh, 
if I want to mess with my party that way. All right. So now let's figure out how we're going to get this stuff rolling, rocking and rolling. Um, so how, yeah, how am I going to, how am I going to incorporate this? Let's start with this small one first, or this big one first. So before I mess with stuff like this, and you can use uh, masks, um, which is what you're supposed to do. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll use a layer mask here. So, how do I want to, there's definitely going to be a little bit of, trying to make this look like it's kind of incorporated, it's going to be a little bit of a chore, which is why when I'm, I'm making these normally, I kind of make the cliffs as I go so I can seamlessly integrate them. But for this purposes, I wanted to make this something I could do being a little ambitious. I want to do the, uh, I definitely want to do the inside and the outside of the city. So see now that, see I like that because I like that, that element there that's going on where there's that kind of high rise and that makes me happy. Um, all right, so let's figure out how we're going to do this bad boy. So this one, whoops, I did, didn't get that one completely. Whoa. Okay. So let's figure out how we're going to get this incorporated. So we're going to try to do this on the top or the bottom. Do we want this to come out? I can rotate this a little bit, but my shadows are already set, so I don't want to do too much crazy rotation. I'm just going to throw that off. But I could do it like this. This is one of the, and if it looks like I'm spending a lot of time, this is one of the more complicated things about doing this particular map, is trying to decide how this shit works. And that should actually be on the top, because that's the biggest thing. I don't know what was doing down there. All right, let's try this. All right. But um, I'm going to increase the hardness by a measure. That might be too much. Uh, so all of these um, cliffs, when I made them, I put a feather on the tops, and it was, and I put a hard, hard cut off at the bottom, so I could get my shadows in. And the feather that I used was a ten-point feather. Um, so I'm not entirely sure. So yeah, so this will be. That's fun. This would be fun. So the, the, the reason why I needed caves is I got these hobgoblins who their lead commander was converted into a vampire. D&D &D things, right, y'all? Um, and so I'm having a problem. You know, those undead forces are going to be most effective at night. So these, uh, these hobgoblins can't go running around all day with all these undead forces and be at full strength. So they need some kind of place to hang out. And I'm betting the PCs are going to be willing to go in after them. If the PCs don't go in after them because they're hunting these guys, uh, then these guys are going to wait till night and wherever the PCs. And, and if that happens, I just have like a, just like kind of a regular little map I'm going to use. Uh, I'll just have them and their little allies uh, with some tents and uh, the undead will swarm them in the middle of the night. So PCs, if you're watching this, my, uh, my advice to you is to go root these guys out. And if you don't want to, well, that's, that's on you, y'all. It's not my deal. All right, so there we go. So that's kind of a cool looking, I'm digging on that. All right. So the next part. Um, so we're gonna have an 
inside of this. Um, do we want to do that first? We probably do want to do that first. All right. Um, so I'll show you all how I do that, or a, a way to do that. Uh, so there's this little site that I know most of you are aware of called Don John. If you are not, uh, my God, this site is amazing. So random generator, or no, dungeon generator. That's what I wanted. So dungeon generator. Um, this this has lets you do all kinds of stuff. So to do what I'm wanting to do, I do large. Um, and then where it has dungeon layout, cavernous. That's what we want. Uh, peripheral egress, no. That means that there'll be an entrance and an exit on both sides. I'm gonna put no, I'll add my own entrance. I don't need their help with that. Um, let's see, and if you wanna just, let me just pop some random numbers in there. Um, details, none, map style, grid. Um, yeah, that doesn't matter. Okay, and um, construct. All right. Um, do I think this will work? Ah, sure. Why not? All right, now something to note about these. Let's toss this in here. And I'm gonna put this so I can see it, increase the opacity. All right, so what we have here, and at one point when I was using these more often, I did actually memorize the uh, the dimensions that you needed to get these to these squares to fit exactly, but I forget what it is off the top of my head. All right, so we're going to go with that. I'll usually make a little layer up here that says blueprints or something like that. Toss that in. So you can mess with your settings for your magic tool until you are just getting what you want. The easier way is to just select the black and then just delete all that junk. Um, and we are going to need to do a little bit of smoothing because this, this is very, as you can tell, this is very not smooth. Um, I'm also going to want to add some places up here. out. Make sure my harness is all the way up. Um, and I might turn that off and do um, do this. Oh, you know, and the other way that I've seen people do this is to use, um, well, I probably will. I probably will still use. So we might, yeah, I might not even worry about smoothing all this out and go through with a texture brush and, well, actually with a layer mask and do it that way. Might be probably the best way to do it. So let's do it. And I apologize about not finishing off that temple video, uh, which was my third or second video that I made. And I did kind of the part, and then I just finished it out. Um, if you guys look around on Reddit and DeviantArt and places, I post the finished product of that. Um, yeah, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't stream and do it. I was just, um, that one actually required a lot of working, had a lot of little working elements going on. And it was, it was just, it was, it was a challenge. It was fun. But it wasn't something that I felt like I could kind of like talk through and do at the same time. Um, all right, so let's look at this real quick. So we're going to have, they're going to come in down here. We should probably make a little escape one, something over 
here too. That could be kind of fun. dimensions go. So I'm going to pull this back a little bit from the top. There we go. Try to keep my, my things um, a couple of my maps uh, not all the way to the edge. Just kind of on the side. I haven't checked on y'all in a while. How's everyone doing out there? Uh, Sacross so uh, has joined us too. So I have all of two followers. Yay! Um, oh, four people are watching. Wow, that's like, that's, that's insane. Uh, big news. Watch out, Critical Role. Coming for you. All right. Um, I think that's good. So let's show how we're going to do this. If I can figure out in my brain, off the top of my head, how I'm going to do this. So let's pull this. Well, we actually, it can stay right there. So I made this handy dandy um, it's going to I, I'm not used to using layer masks, so when you see me about to duplicate something, it's because I'm like, oh, before I mess with this thing, I better, I better make a copy of it first, because I've been doing that for years, and now that I'm using, trying to use layer masks like a like a good Photoshop person, I am not used to that. So I'm used to, but you know, the thing is, is about having all of these textures duplicated has caused some serious bloat on. Uh, on my hard drive and I've really got to start using layer masks or I'm going to end up having to buy like you know terabyte external hard drives every year or two <laughs> so uh, yeah trying to trying to get into good habits that's what it's all about good habits alright so now I think we can actually hide these at the moment. We don't need those. So I'm gonna go through here and I'm going to, or no, I want those hard. I want that hardness, what I want is a good size. And this is a, a, these are techniques that I've seen. Uh, meditating monkey, shout out to him, who's kind of uh, sort of a, um, I guess you could say mentor and buddy of mine. Um, and how do we feel about those walls? Okay, um, that shows him as being five feet thick, which I think is sufficient. Oh, no, let's not leave that on. Need to learn the keyboard shortcut for hiding that thing. And then once we get this, now some of the stuff that I've done, I've done some layers and in uh, and layers, I don't mean L-A-Y-E-R, but I mean L-A-I-R-S. And whenever you're doing weight layers, <laughs> the first time I made a dragon layer, man, my dragon couldn't get out of it because <laughs> it was too tight. So, uh, I had to go back and actually make adjustments to make sure my la dragon could get into my damn layer. So if you yeah, if you're ever making layers, don't forget the little stuff on that. This is hobgoblins and undead, and uh, you know undead aren't typically the the big giant. Now there might be an undead dragon in here, um, although that depends upon the time I have today because I've actually got some 
day job work work to do and then but you'll see I'm making maps first huh uh, but I have some work to do and then I've got to prep for the campaign so I'm not happy with shadow dragons and dragon liches being the only undead dragons available that's kind of BS to me um, because I want dragons in my game because this is Dungeons and Dragons not Dungeons and Hobgoblins although that would be a fun game too I suppose I'm actually going to do that and then yeah and you can make little structural changes um, the little tip of doing that from Donjon and grabbing one of their uh, random maps it, it just, you know, it saves me from having to figure it out. Like, I feel like if I'm trying to sit here and figure out the layout of a cavern or a, or a dungeon or something like that, I will spend forever doing that. And I will be, at, I mean, the uh, the temple map um, map stream that I, I didn't finish is case in point. Like, I spent hours designing that lower dungeon, and it was just, I, I really could have not done that. <laughs> I really could have picked several other methods to avoid following down that kind of hole. Um, and this is one such way that I do that. Alright, now let's see if this... I'm just looking to make sure, see if people can fit places. Um, that's going to be tight squeeze real tight squeeze but I like that I like that uh, I, I like there being some small places I've got people who play goblins and, and stuff like that in my game so and uh, gnomes so it's fun to have places where the bigger people can't really go or go as easily um, try to have some variation and I might try to add some variation in the verticality of these mines uh, on this stream we'll see how far I get I'm making pretty good progress at the moment we're about 20 minutes in I'm still got the outer kind of like outer area to do and I want to show y'all how to make all that um, there is okay well there's that uh... Done with that. That can go sit up there. Um, something I want to do real quick. I'm going to perform an experiment. I don't know if this will work. No. Disable layer mask. A map with a T Rex lurking underground this weekend didn't give enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, see. Okay, I'm not alone. Well, thanks for making me feel better. Yeah, because uh, been there, done that. Felt like pretty dumb when I did that. Because I'd also released it on all these Reddit forums. It's like, hey, here's a. There's a map that's uh, for your ancient white dragon. And people are like, my ancient white dragon can't fit in there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> um, okay, there is a, a background that I wanted to use that I didn't include in all those other textures that I said uh, that I said I was, I was uh, or that I did upload to the Patreon. Um, I've got this thing that I wanted to use. Where is he? Where is it? So this is my place where I make all my cliffs. Uh, this is my cliff making file. Oops. 
Did I destroy what I had? Or does it require a black background? That might be it. That's it. Yeah, I made this because I wanted to use it. We'll see if it fits here or not. It may not, but uh, I enjoy having fun stuff like that. All right, so now we have our underground mines. And uh, if we want to, and you can actually do these as you're, as you're going. Um, we're going to add some, some little fun stuff. Uh, some shadows and inner glow and, um, and all that. Ooh, that's not good. That is a problem, my friends. Um, when I textured this uh, rock earlier, I apparently did a poor job. But there's there's there are ways around that. The easiest way. If I can figure out how to do this with a with a uh, vector mask on, oh sweet. Yeah, so I just took a thin brown layer uh, and tossed it underneath to fill all the, the cracks for me. It's not perfect, but in a pinch it'll work. Um, okay, so shadows. If you want, uh, like, so if you're doing like a dungeon and there's walls and stuff like that, um, a lot of people use the level and emboss up here, and you can kind of see the difference. Um, it'll add a little white on one side and then, and then uh, black so it's supposed to be light and shadow um, I'm not going to do that for this particular case for reasons um, but there we go and then we can also mess with the color and stuff like that when we're ready all right so there's this we have our caves um, and now we still have our cliffs one thing I have not done, um, I have not added grass and dirt. Steam folder. Okay, so let's. This we are going to duplicate because we want a level that's above. So we actually want a level that's above the cliffs or above the cave, and then we want a level below the cave. All right, and then we're also going to want a grass texture that's above and below as well. So when applying grass, I like to do my everything else first. So let's work on the everything else. Um, these I put in an upper texture so they know. 
And we should probably duplicate these cliffs at some point to have it look like, um, to have the cliffs still there when I hide the rest of them. Um, so just hide part of the cliffs. And so you can see them. Um, there's some other options too. We can we can make a copy of this cliff thing so that it, it sits under or over this cave. So it looks like so you can be so characters can be in and out of the cave at the same time because we definitely want them to be able to do that. Uh, having them be on top of the cave and on the ground level with it and inside. Eh, yeah, I mean, bah, you're just you're just kind of certain uh, limitations um, just for this type of mapping style. All right, so let's go up here. <clears throat> I think it's time for, um, so I call this dressing back, going back to long school D&D, there are all these kind of dungeon dressing charts. And so if you ever wanted to add stuff to your dungeons or whatever you call it dressing, so that's why I call it dressing. probably a more correct term somewhere. So let's start with things that are going to have a major impact on uh, from like a combat perspective. Um, things that are going to help you know cover and, and stuff like that. Um, so we're going to start off with some boulders. So these boulders have the same um, underlying texture as these cliffs. So they should fit thematically. Like once I add um, some color or some color and everything to them, like they, they should look like they belong here, uh, which is one reason why I've done this. They shouldn't look like they're, they're something alien that, that shouldn't have been placed here and shouldn't have. And I think I'm going to, um, yeah, actually that might be a good use of these, seal off this other passage. Because there's obviously the way that I put these textures together, there's obviously like a route, but I don't necessarily want people taking it or the PCs trying to use it. So just by sealing it off is a good way to discourage that. They want to climb through a bunch of boulders. Hey, I'll power to them. And you know, and some of this is the limitations of using map versus theater of the minds. So I'm not knocking theater of the mind at all. I love theater of the mind. Um, but as you guys can probably tell, I love maps probably more. So, <laughs> so theater of the mind can can whatever. Addicted to maps. See, I was thinking about making a little passage over here somewhere. And I have a little secret passage over there. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll figure that out here in a little bit. One of my big, big daddy rocks. there and yeah, no, looks very video gameish. We'll uh we'll put this one down here. And for these uh you can also make these things really really small and uh use them for little like rock like you know stones that are lying on the ground and stuff like that. So uh made these with the same way that I used to make uh same way that I, I made the that I made the cliffs. Also made my trees in a very similar way. Okay. 
these the big thing these 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 boulders over here they're going to get treated a little bit differently than everything else I'll put them at the bottom which is where they belong because they're, they're underneath everything else so ooh actually I shouldn't have done that yet I want to I want to apply my shadows and whatnot before I do that Oh, I made a boulders folder already. Oh well. It's in here. Just gonna go away. All right. So grab these boulders right here. And uh, let's see. So we are over 30 minutes in. Close on 40 minutes. And I'd said I wanted to finish this map up and uh, convert it to winter. The winter process takes about 10 minutes, um, depending upon how many layers you have. It's not that intensive, and it's something that I get a lot of positive feedback on, and I'm using it, I'm making winter maps in my campaign, so, because I'm running a winter campaign inspired by Game of Thrones. It's gonna be a long winter, y'all. They're in the equivalent of March right now in game, and winter is not even close to dying out. It's basically not going to until the party or someone else does something about it. But that'll be fun in the middle of July or August when people start running out of food. All right. All right, there we go. There's some boulders. Uh, let's go ahead and add drop shadows. Um, and as far, oh, y'all can't see me doing this stuff. I'm sorry, I'm using my second monitor. Maybe I should be. Bad, bad Valor. Um, There we go. Um, that's fun. All right. Just gonna merge those like that. All right. So there we go. So now we have some. Uh, although it occurs to me. on that. Feels like it should be bigger. Feels like these uh, these larger boulders should have more uh, oomph to them. I mean, not enough um. And you can, I mean, you can totally make shapes and make your own shadows that, uh, that look more realistic. Um, you could even do something like this. You could duplicate layer, um, clear layer style. Oops, not shadow, color overlay. Black, 100%. Um, outer glow, you're gonna wanna give it a slight outer glow which is not in my options. Outer glow, you're gonna to wanna to give it a very, very mild outer glow when you do this. And then, um, and then you so you rasterize it, put it underneath this other boulder, give it an opacity of about, f I, I've been, for shadows, I'm, I'm moving towards 40 to 50%. I had them on like 70 to 80 and that was too much. Um, and then, yeah, and then do something like that if you want them to be more realistic. 
Um, and that's great. And, and you can you can do that. Um, but to me, it depends upon what I have time and what my goal is. Uh, this is just a free map I'm making that I'm sending out to people. And I'm going to be uh, using it in my game tonight. So I'm not going to do that for all of these boulders. Because that's a timely process. All right. I am, however... Yeah, we'll just we'll just take those that bigger one. And we'll just do it to all these. Except for the small boulders. The small boulders don't don't get that big shadow. There we go. Right, now we're done with that. I'll go into duplicate group. Merge group. So there's that. Um, next group. How do we feel about logs? Um, I feel like in here to remember your um, your size I think logs are good oh, I want know what we're gonna do with logs here We'll have logs as makeshift uh, battlements for the hobgoblins. That'll be uh, be cool and neat. And if the players try climbing up the cliffs, they'll roll logs at them. Because why the hell not? Definitely probably don't need as big of a drop shadow on a log as a boulder. Probably drop that off some. There you go. We still have a conundrum of Also need so these upper textures are getting in the way too. So these upper textures need to go away when it 
that's outside of their their scope. done this outside real quick we're gonna pop back in and do a couple of quick things oh yeah I usually call these upper dressing upper dressing and lower dressing just so I can hide them easily So let's do something. Let's make this. Let's make this a little bit darker than the outside ground, just because that makes sense. Um, something else we're going to do here in a second. So I'm going to add some textures to this to make it to make it seem different. So let's make a um, cave. Layer. The cave layer is going to include I brought these stones in specifically for this purpose. This is going to be bounded, this background is going to be bounded by the cliffs. So I'm actually going to take another feather brush. I'm going to feather the outskirts of this cliff. I'm actually going to probably really need to do that. But I'm going to use that to delete them. Come on. Oh, okay. It's going to make me redo the feather. I did not set my feather all the way. So there we go. So we actually do have a little place over there where we could put a, we could hide. So let's make, <clears throat> let's do something similar with that too.
combine this, combine that to this, and have them kind of. Yeah, I might do that again. So I'll just go up here, and uh, so this time what I'm doing is I'm gonna what I want. Oops. just to have some cliff that I can sort of grab here. Ooh, I know what I'm gonna do instead to align that. Well, put this over here. And inverse, delete all the rest of that. There we go. All right, so now, cause I can, I can put these two together and then that'll be the outside when you're inside looking out. Um, still need to do something about this. I'm going to do that right now. Do that at the same time I'm doing this. So. Um, oops. try this and see what I think. See how that makes me feel. I can live with that. It's not my favorite, but all right, Matt. Well, I might end up. Uh, so we're at we're at an hour. Um, at the moment, and I've got a cat that won't get off my lap. Alright. <sighs> hmm. 
Tell you what, y'all. I might need to uh, to take a to take a quick break. I've been at an hour. Um, yeah, give me give me a few minutes. I'll be back. So, yeah, I'm giving myself 35 more minutes for this. Uh, I just put some food in the oven, and I'll take like 35, 40 minutes. When that's done, I'm, I'm going to run out. So, um, all right. But I think we're making good progress. Um, all right, so upper dressing. So the last thing I think we need up here is we definitely need trees. Gotta have them trees. Um, there's some OC trees that I made. Um, so at some point, I'm working on different variations of trees. I'm working on some that have uh, Some of them that where you only see the shadow, so players know where the, the, the trunks are, so they can hide behind trunks. If you like using that method, I'm working on some some that have realistic shadows. Um, I'm working on um, winter and autumn versions of specific kinds of trees. I'm working on all kinds of stuff. So one thing that I'm not gonna have in this map that you would normally want in a winter map, I'm not gonna have dead trees. Um, just not. Um, still making dead trees, still making live and dead trees and figuring out all the different stuff as far as those go. And I'm just not, uh, just not something for the purview of this particular map. But, but uh, that is a important consideration. 
because if you're making a winter map, there should be, there should be, uh, well, they're not really dead trees. That's what I call them in my assets. They're actually, you know, dormant trees, but for the purposes of map making, um, for the purposes of map making, it's really hard to tell the difference between a dormant tree and a, and a dead tree. <laughs> kind of, for battle maps, they all kind of look dead. So, um, so we're gonna do this. Is that? Oh, I still got more coming, man. I was generous. Um, all of these are in my Patreon right now. I need to go delete some of those. Jeez. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Alright. So if you want a map to look really... Whoops. That's not at all what I wanted. Uh, if you want a map to look really uh, different, so you, every time you take one of these, you'll kind of twist it and, and toss it somewhere. But... Not only is this, sh this map really shouldn't have a ton of trees. If there's uh, hobgoblins using this as their base, like they're not gonna want trees just like hanging around everywhere. Cause uh, that, that's, that's Im you know, impairment to their vision. So, um, you know, ideally if, if I had more time for this, probably take actually more stumps and put them around. But we'll say they haven't been here long. So they're just, uh, yeah, they haven't been here a very long time. All right, so we have some trees. And uh, we're going to add some drop shadows, some inner shadows, and some inner glows. Oh, ew. No, 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 no. That was way too much. So really the last thing to do uh, on this particular map, so we, we, ha we need to do something about this grass. This grass is just too damn green. And uh, we can start up here. So I need to find an opacity level that works for me. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing that. Uh, I'm gonna be deleting. Um, And I guess I can do that with a layer mask. But I've got to figure out the opacity so it's not too hard on the eyes. I want it to be noticeable but I don't want it to be rough. All right, what, what is... Uh... Yeah, I think that works. rocks are
same thing down here. Oh wait, oops, haha, -ha. we are, but we need a new layer mask. That's a different layer. Another thing I like to do, so there we have that. Alright, um, all right, we're getting really close, at least on this outside part. Um, not going to quite make an hour, but that's okay. Um, let's see. One thing left I like to do is I like to have a path layer. And my path layer um, it's one of my favorite things that I do um, that if done right, I really think add just like a whole different dimension to those ground layers. It's having these paths. Um, so the secret to the path layer, you want to draw it to the places where you think people normally go a lot, where, where things have been happening. Um, secret to the map layer or the path layer is you want this to be to where you can't you can just like your your eyes really sort of can't see it anymore oops let me do this and and that changes see that's 27 that's way too much 9 16 that's still too much that's about right and then because you notice so Ooh, that, 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 that's too much. You want it to be where they just, they can barely see it. All right, so let's turn this, let's turn everything on here. Um, this is our layer. Or this is our map now. Um, we've got some fun stuff. We've got a cave inside. We've got places for ballista. Um, all right, so my second promise, uh, or my, my kind of thing here, for dressing, winter. All right, so for trees, we're going to go to, and we're going to use the same technique on everything. <clears throat> and it's a little repetitive, but we're out. Oh, I guess I should walk you through it, huh? So we can go to images, adjust, replace color. And then we're gonna I'm not gonna do that. Um, and you select color, select one of the lighter colors in the sample. then change those to white, turn your lightness all the way up, and then mess with fuzziness until you've, until you've gotten what you want. I'll show you kind of a preview of how much you've grabbed. See, that's too much. See if I can tone it down. Oh, that might work. Yep, there we go. 
All right, so now we're just going to really repeat this process with everything. Uh, we're going to go to logs. Two boulders. starting to come together um, Oh, there's something other to mention about when so when doing this to grass um, yeah grass isn't uh, grass isn't green in the winter um, grass is going to call it that color or negative 42 and negative 42 there we go that's the color of grass in the winter the color of winter grass. Yeah, I noticed something about those paths. You have to make a separate one of those for the winter too. Because <coughs> uh, they stand out on that white a whole lot. So you gotta you got to tone them down. Yeah, 
that's the grass going at that red hue. saturation on it. Normally I go for like a, a yellowish brown uh, when I'm doing the, the grass textures for winter. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend just a ton of time with it. It's not gonna make this map live or die. It's not a bad little battle map. I do not think. Um, all right. Well, there's that. Um, let's let's check inside real quick. So we did that. Alright, uh, is there anything else we want to do with this map? Um, too many stones? Maybe. Don't need uh, all these stones everywhere. Maybe need some stones. So let's just... to this um, and we still could we wanted to add like some upper sections or something like that um, just go to here and then um, without having to, to go so far as like the cliffs and actually do all that can just um, so if you want to do something like this and then you um, let's see be a little too much. So yeah, if, so if you want to do this, you can, uh, you can add some verticality, and we could also make some pits and stuff if we wanted to. Um, but honestly, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not sure if I'm digging that. Oh, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe I take that back.
that account. So anyway, yeah, and you can have something like that. Um, oh, last remaining thing. So yeah, for to have to show all this stuff out here, we're gonna want to go up here to uh, upper dressing winter. Duplicate group, and we're gonna want to merge group. Anything, delete that feather. Anything that's inside the cave has got to go. So, there. So, you can have this when you have this up. So, this is what the map would actually look like. So, you'd have like, a, yeah, you'd have, there's the, there's the inside, and then, uh, this we can actually put this down here with the cave and then if you want don't want to do that let me drop that you know, that's where's that from is that from my grass texture you look at that and then there we go there's the outer one all right y'all um, it looks like well, there we go so thank you everybody for tuning in or anybody who watched this um, you can find all those assets on my patreon at uh, valor maps um, also I've been pretty active on Twitter lately so um, I'll probably continue to be right now I've got reddit Twitter DeviantArt, this and patreon um, at some point that's gonna be unsustainable I'm either gonna have to find a way to link all of them or uh, or do something but uh, for right now those are the places I have so check me out on those and oh god damn it yeah, clips there we go that's the right one um, but yeah anyway thank you everybody y'all have a good weekend uh, enjoy the maps hope you use them to to uh, destroy your p I mean um, Give everybody a good time. Talk to y'all later. Bye.